Hi guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about block providers and we're going to be talking about the best practices of these block providers. To really thoroughly explain this concept, I'm going to need to sort of give a history lesson on the block pattern and then talk about how it's sort of redirected itself over the last year or so. The original block pattern was implemented mainly to bridge Angular and Flutter. When Flutter came out, most of the developers that were working with Dart were working with Angular Dart. And so it made sense to try to make a way of sharing code between these two different technologies. And that's where this idea of a business logic component built purely out of streams was invented. Nowadays, however, Flutter's aim is to sort of create a single code base that can run on multiple different platforms that is not limited to just mobile. So in the future, presumably, we'll have the ability to write our Flutter mobile application and then make minor changes to deploy it to desktop as well as web. And as a result of this, we need to sort of refocus what this block is about by looking at it as a Flutter component rather than a common component that's shared between two or three different programs. Here's what the original architecture looked like. So you had the inherited widget, which typically went into the root widget of the application. And then you would have your material app widget followed by your scaffold. And then below that, you would have your app widget tree. The advantages of using the inherited widget for the block provider are that every single widget that tries to access the block has a constant time complexity to get to the block provider. This means that the time it takes for, say, a widget down here to get to the block and the time it takes for, say, a widget up here to get to the block is exactly the same. So no matter how large your tree is and no matter where the widget is that needs access to the block, it takes the same amount of time. This architecture, however, gives rise to another problem. While the inherited widget was the original implementation that you typically saw for the block pattern, people started to realize that if they used an inherited widget, they had no way of actually disposing of the streams of the block itself because the inherited widget doesn't have any hooks that allow you to call a dispose method from directly inside of it. The unfortunate side effect of this is that using the inherited widget can lead to fairly large memory leaks. So nowadays, if you go and you look at the block pattern, either through GitHub or through the various tutorials that exist on the internet, you'll come across implementations that use a stateful widget for the provider rather than an inherited widget. And the advantage of this is that the stateful widget allows you to close the streams using the dispose method that's built into the stateful widget's lifecycle. So again, the architecture will look relatively similar to what we had before, except of course the stateful widget will have the widget part and then the state object associated with it. And inside of the state object is where we can actually close the streams. This solution is not perfect either. Using a stateful widget increases the time complexity for searching for the block through the widget tree, and it increases it to linear time rather than constant time. This means that the time to actually get the block will increase based on where the widget is inside of the tree. So if I take this widget down here and I try to get to the block up here, it'll take longer than if I was to, say, use this widget over here. So on one hand, with the inherited widget, we have our constant time, which is a fairly nice performance boost. But on the other hand, we have this stateful widget, which allows us to close the streams. This past weekend, I was looking through GitHub and I was sort of reading all of these different tutorials on block and reading all of the documentation on the block pattern. And I kept running into these two different implementations. I went to the Flutter community and I asked them why people were using stateful widgets in lieu of inherited widgets, because the way that I understood it was that the inherited widget was the better choice overall. After talking with a few of these individuals, we eventually came to the conclusion that the best way to actually implement the block provider is to implement and use both an inherited widget and a stateful widget. 
The idea behind this architecture is that we create an inherited widget, which is essentially our block provider, and then we embed it inside of a stateful widget. The inherited widget still gets the constant time complexity search, and then the stateful widget allows us to properly dispose of the streams. One of the individuals that I talked to about this specific pattern has a library called Provider, which actually creates these providers for you. And I'll be sure to link that down in the description so that you guys can take a look at it if you want to. Now, for those of you who haven't been following along with this tutorial series, if you're not familiar with this application, that's all right. I'm going to go through it real quick so that you guys can understand it and so that you can understand this tutorial. So currently we have two blocks. We have a contribution block, which goes out to a API and gets all of the data that appears inside of this list view here, as well as the list view in this page here. Then we also have this information block, and this information block gets information from a package info library and from the GitHub API. And that information gets put into this drawer here, and it also powers this button right here. Both of these blocks providers extend inherited widgets, and they both are structured in the same exact way. One of them is at the root of our application, and then the other one is down here inside of the scaffold and wrapping around the actual drawer itself. Let's go ahead and get started here by creating a file called baseprovider.dart inside of the blocks folder. And inside of here, we'll create our generic provider. So first we'll start with the inherited widget piece. And what we wanna do is use a generic type, which will then allow us to basically use this class in a way that's sort of polymorphic for our different blocks. So the idea is that this type is a stand-in for the two types of our blocks, and it allows us to then basically reuse this provider based on the block that we're putting into it. Let's start by creating the constructor. And like with our other providers, we want to create a final variable for the block itself. The constructor will also take in the key and then the child that we want to wrap inside of this provider. Now, because we're using an inherited widget, we need to override the update should notify method and implement our own version of it. And all we really need to do is say, if we have this provider widget and that block is not equal to the new block that is this final instance, then we want to rebuild the entire inherited widget. Now, like with our other providers, we need to create a static of method so that we can access the block inside of this inherited widget. So again, our of method will take in the build context. This notation for the generic is what's called a parameterized literal. So we have our parameterized literal of our generic type B, and we need to insert it in front of the of method to indicate that we're going to use a generic type for this method. Now we could try to write our function like we wrote it before, but this is sort of a flawed implementation because of the generic. So we want to create a function which will allow us to actually access the type of this provider. And that function will look like this. So we have a type called type, which is just an abstract class, which is a stand-in for any type inside of Dart. And then we can just create a function which uses the generic B that just returns the generic B. Now inside of our of method, we can just call get type and then pass in provider B as the parameterized type for the generic. And then that will give us back the appropriate type. We can go ahead and call context inherit from widget of exact type, pass in the type that we got here. And of course we want to set that into a provider of generic type. And then we can go ahead and return the block from the provider like this. Let's go ahead and create the stateful widget element of our provider. So I've created a class called block provider, which has the generic type B and it extends the stateful widget type. And then of course, we also need to create the state object, which will be called block provider state. And of course, this is also generic. Now keep in mind that with generics, you can really use any letter that you want. I'm just using the capital letter B for block, but typically you'll see generics with any letter or any set of letters, as long as those letters are not a reserved keyword, or as long as the type doesn't already exist. 
So with the block provider, we need to create the create state function, which will then create our state object. We want to create three different fields and we want to pass them to the constructor. So first we'll create a void function called on dispose, which takes in the build context and then the block. And then we'll take a function which will return the type B, which also takes in the build context and then the block. And this will be called builder. And then finally, we want to define a widget, which we'll call child. Now the idea behind the on disposed and the builder function is to make it easy for us to define the logic that we want to use to build our block in the case of our builder function and to dispose of the streams in the block in the case of the on dispose function. The builder is actually very much like the builder function that you would find inside of a stream builder where you pass in the context, except in our case, we're using this to build the block itself. And the same goes for the on dispose function. Let's then take all of these fields and pass them to our constructor. And we want the child builder and on dispose fields to all be required. So we'll annotate them with the at required macro. Now let's work on the actual state object of this provider. We need to insert the actual block, which again will be type B. And then we want to override in its state, dispose, and then build so that we can actually initialize the state of our block, dispose the streams in our block, and also build out the widgets. And as we mentioned before, we want to take our inherited widget and embed it inside of this stateful widget. So we can just do that by inserting it into the build function. When this widget gets built, it wraps directly around the provider and we put the block into the provider and then we can take the child out of the top stateful widget here and insert it into the child of our inherited widget provider. For the dispose method, we just want to check to see if the widget on dispose function is not equal to null, meaning it exists. And if it does exist, then we can execute this function with our build context and the block inside of it. And then, of course, we want to follow up by calling super dispose. We can do something similar for the init state function. We just check to see if the builder function is not equal to null. And if it's not equal to null, then we want to execute it and take the block that results from calling this function and pass it into our block variable. And then remember that this block variable that we get from the init state function then gets pushed into our inherited widget, which we can then access from any other widget inside of our widget tree using the constant time complexity rather than linear time complexity. We can now go into our main.dark file and implement this provider that we just created. So first let's start with the contribution provider. And you'll notice that I completely commented out these two providers because we're not going to need them anymore at all. And then I've imported the base provider that we just created. Down here where we had the contribution provider, we want to instantiate our block provider. And then for the parameterized type, we need to pass in the contribution block because that will be the block type that is associated with this block provider. Then we can go ahead and define the builder function for this block provider. And what we'll do is we'll just make the build context an anonymous variable because we don't need it. And then we'll take the block and we'll check to see if the block already exists. And if it does, then we just keep it. Otherwise, we instantiate a new one using the constructor and we pass in the rocks API. For the on dispose property of this block provider, we'll create a function that looks very similar to the builder. We'll use the block just to call the dispose function, and then this will actually dispose of the resources of our block. Before we implement the information block, provider, I just wanted to mention that this block doesn't actually need a dispose function because the two streams inside of it are streams that are coming from the block and going into our UI. So the user interface is where we actually dispose of these streams and they get disposed of because they use the Rx observable pattern. So inside of this block, I'm just going to create a function called dispose and then I'll just have it print out that it's disposing of the information block. If we ever did add a stream sync or a stream controller, then we obviously would want to add it to the dispose function down here. 
Now we've created our block provider using the stateful widget, but we want to access the block through the inherited widget portion of our block provider. So down here where we had the call to our contribution provider of method, we want to replace that with the inherited widget provider of, and then we need to pass in the parameterized type of the contribution block because we specifically want this block provider. And then this will give us back the contribution block like we had before. Now, of course, for our information block provider, we also want to add the block provider with the parameterized information block type. And then for the builder, again, we're just going to check to see if the block inside of it is null or not. And then if it is null, we'll call the information block constructor with the package info from platform and then the GitHub API. Then the onDisposed function will just take the block and call dispose on it. Now we need to go into our information drawer file and modify the calls to get the information provider block so that it uses our generic base provider instead. And of course, we'll comment out the import for the information provider and we'll add the base provider as well as the information block so that we can access the type of our information block in this file. Inside of build info panel, we'll just call provider of information block and then pass in the context and this will give us the information block. And then we wanna go ahead and do the same thing for the get new release function down here. Now let's go ahead and open up the application again to see if this all works. And you can see that everything looks as it did before we started this process. And of course I can go between the two pages here and then I can open up the drawer. And then when I go ahead and close the drawer inside of our debugger, you can see right here it says dispose of information block because it called the dispose method for our information block when the drawer was closed. And of course the button inside of the information block still works and everything still works as it should. But this time we don't have to worry about any kind of memory leaks if our application stays open for a long time and we still get the very quick time complexity to actually search out the block structure in our widget tree. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this tutorial, then by all means downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.